everybody and welcome to Technical Thursday. My name is Denise. If you don't know me, I am the founder of Seeking Spirit. And every Thursday I just hop on and make a little video about items that I use in my paranormal investigations. Kind of like tutorials of things that I utilize um, during my investigations. So that way you guys can kind of see what I use, how I use it, and... <clears throat> things that are pretty interesting and we'll talk about all sorts of different things while I'm on here. So today I wanted to hop on and I wanted to talk about everyday normal items that I use during investigations. The one thing I love about doing investigations is you can use a everyday normal item and turn it into a paranormal um, piece of equipment to use to communicate with spirit. So I just want to go over a couple of things that I use in my investigations and then I want to talk about a couple of things that I'd like to get that I just haven't used yet. So the first thing I use a lot is a flashlight and this is a, they call it a mag flashlight and the reason why is because it, it, turns it doesn't have a push button it doesn't have like a up down button it turns and um, one of these times I will go into more detail about these um, because they are great to use um, basically what you want to do is you want to set it up somewhere in your room that you're investigating or cemetery or wherever you are and you want to turn it so it is just turned off like so if you just turn it like if you hit it like that one like if you hit it it's not going to turn on if you roll it it's not going to turn on but it's not too far turned off so that way spirit can manipulate this and what spirit does is they can turn it on and they can turn it off um just by moving this a little bit obviously we can't see it move but we can see it turning on and turning off and i know Different investigators use it, use flashlights different ways. Um, if you only have one flashlight, you can, you know, obviously you start it with turned off and then you can ask, you know, if someone's here with me, can you turn the flashlight on? And they'll turn it on. Um, and then you can say, thank you, can you turn it off? And ideally they'll turn it off. Um, and then you can go from there. And then, you know, can you turn it back on for me can, if, you, if this is a yes? Um, obviously, if you're only using one flashlight, if it doesn't turn on, that's probably a no answer. Um, other investigators, and what I've also done is I've use, used one, two, or three flashlights. And if you use two flashlights, you can do one for yes, one for no. You know, you can tell the spirit if it's a yes answer, turn the left one on. If it's a no answer, turn the right one on. And then you can ask them and say um, if you can, you know, please turn the left flashlight on for yes can you do that so I know that you know that answer or sometimes you know you'll do one two you can do three flashlights you know if it's a yes no maybe or um, other investigations we had different flashlights set up throughout the room on Seeking Spirit or on my YouTube page Seeking Spirit there is a video of Greystone Manor it's about four and a half minutes long and it's you'll see that it's primarily a video of us investigating around a pool table and we have several flashlights set up around the pool table and we have set we have them set up like this sitting on top so it shines up and you can see we do have flashlight activity and a couple of the fla different flashlights do light up at different times so I encourage you to go and watch that video because that's a great video for a flashlight interaction so a basic flashlight that's what you can use um, so that's that another good thing that we use is um, kind of stupid but always bring batteries lots and lots of batteries because Almost every piece of equipment uses batteries. Most of them use AAA and AA. I do have a couple that use C batteries or D batteries. Um, but a good tip is when you go to an investigation, always change out that battery to a new battery. Um, for a couple of different reasons. One, you want to have a strong battery. And two, that way there's enough juice in there so the spirit can manipulate it. I will tell you an example is I went to an investigation 
I went to a cemetery one night with a bunch of, with a couple of friends and I forgot to ch I forgot to bring batteries and I didn't change out a battery and a quarter way through my session with the flashlight actually um, it went dead and I didn't have any other flashlights didn't have any other batteries and I had to stop and I couldn't investigate anymore because I ran out of batteries so it's always good to change out the battery because it, the spirit will utilize the energy from the battery to help communicate with us so it's sometimes it drains more and you'll see sometimes that if they if spirit does take the energy out of the battery it will drain that piece of equipment very fast i've had usually a good battery will last um you know will usually last pretty good for a whole session but i've had sometimes that it doesn't last as long now, i'll tell you i'm like cheap and i buy these at the dollar store um, or the dollar 25 store now so i go through batteries a lot because they're not the greatest batteries but i mean when i can buy one two three four five so when i can buy eight batteries for a dollar 25 for my equipment and especially if i'm throwing them away after every single use um you know why not so batteries are a good thing to have i always have lots of batteries on hand and it's also good at home because like when the tv remote goes out and we don't have any batteries up oh, dig into the paranormal bag and i you know, always got batteries so that's that um a piece of equipment that i have bought recently that i've used and i have not had any interaction with are touch lights so this one is a touch light you just um this one might be dead oh nope so basically what you do is you just uh, basically you just touch it like like you did it. maybe it only does that way anyways um the battery's low on it but basically you touch it right here and this one let me see if i can get my phone out So basically you touch this button right here and it turns on and off and the idea behind this is what i have tried to do is i just lay down on the floor and you know i ask spirit to come touch it and if they touch it then it'll turn on i will tell you i have not had this turn on yet but you never know i mean I have seen other touch lamps come on and off um, in different investigations. So it's a good tool to try to use. Um, you know, maybe one day it will turn on, but I'm just going to keep using it and see what happens. So everyday touch lamps, that's a good one to have um, because it's easy for a spirit to manipulate it because all they do is touch it. Another item, balls. Um, balls are great to use because you can put it on the floor and see if, um, spirit can manipulate it and move it um, especially if you're going to a place that have children like the Iron Island Museum they have a spirit of a little boy named Tommy and if you put this ball down they can move it um, some people will like if you're doing an investigation over a couple of days you could take something like baby powder or you know <clears throat> um talc powder and put it around it and see if it moves it through it um that's another thing and also baby powder is another good one if you lay it on the floor you can see if you can get footprints going through it um but balls are good to use for children um children's spirits to see if they move it um one item that i don't have but i'm planning on getting at some point are cat balls light up cat balls um you can get them on amazon between 15 and 20 dollars and i will tell you a lot of people do use them and they light up um there is a gentleman that belongs to Speak seeking spirit mikey burkett um, I think I said his name. Um, I do share some of his videos. Um, he does have cat balls, and I one of his last videos I did see, he did use it, and they did light up. So um, very cool item to use are cat balls and regular balls because you can buy them in everyday items, and it's good that, you know, spirits can utilize them. Um, another thing, candles and lights, okay? Candles are good um, and bad. So candles are good because you can, they're easy for a spirit to manipulate. Um, if you light them, um, the spirit can manipulate them 
by moving the wick or by moving the flame. So, you know, if it's just very still and awesome, it, it flickers, you know, that's a spirit, you know, going by or moving it. You have to be careful with candles and flames because obviously you want it as fire and you don't want to start the place on fire where you're at. And second of all, you have to be careful about um, air conditioning, heat, um, windows that are open, um, drafty houses, because all of that can affect the flame. So if you see it flickering, it could just be the air conditioning kicked on. So you, if you do use that, you do have to be very careful about debunking it. Um, and debunking means basically seeing if it's everyday items or everyday things that are causing this and not spirit. So you want to make sure that if you do use it, that you're very cautious about, you know, what is it really? Is it really the air conditioning or is the spirit moving it? So um, candles, those are good to use. Um, what else? Um, I have this little tool here and it is a little, little, kind of see it. Um, it is a, it is a finger light. Okay, goes on the figure, here's the thing, and you turn it on. Um, it's a light, and this is good for if you are investigating in a dark place. Um, obviously, a lot of people do investigate in darkness, and if you want to kind of, you know, finagle with your, like, your digital voice recorder or your EMF or, you know, another tool that you have, and you need a little flashlight, th these are cute, these are good to use because it shines just enough so you can see it's not too bright so it hurts your eyes and um it attaches your fingers so that way it's out of your way and your hands are all free um a lot of stores sell these especially for halloween time um you can also i believe get them at the party city and that's that Another item that I use, which I don't have my notebook, but pen and paper. Pen and paper is very important, especially before you start your investigation when you do your walkthrough. A lot of times when you go to places, especially new places, or if you're doing like a residential case, um, it's good to have a notebook and a paper and pen because you want to write down all of the activity you get so you remember your hot spots. Um, I did a case recently, a couple months ago, in Ransomville. And the owner had a lot of good, um, she had a lot of good information because she had done a lot of history herself. So I was able to write down and refer to this notebook during my investigation. Um, so that way, you know, <clears throat> I can remember, you know, was it her husband, Larry, or was it, you know, her neighbor, George? Obviously, I'm making up names, obviously, but I mean, it's good to refer to that because, uh, I mean, you know, you're hearing so much information at one time that you're not going to remember everything. So a pen and paper is good to write all that down. If you are in a, you know, I'm pretty small when I go investigating, but I know a lot of groups like Ghost Hunters and Ghost Adventures where they put up all sorts of cameras and they have like, you know, they put their digital voice recorders everywhere. Um, writing things down is good because then you can notate where your hotspots are. So that way, you know, like when I went to Iron Island Museum, a hotspot was up in the attic. So that was one thing that I notated was up in the attic was to put a digital voice recorder up there. And I also wrote what kind of activity they got when they, you know, when they are in their building all the time. So that way, when I'm doing my analysis, I can go back and I can refer to it and like, oh, they had footstops. Well, I got footstops. So this kind of validates what they're saying. So pen and paper, um, that's another good one. Um talked about the talc powder the baby powder that's a good one I don't have any with me um but I think that's pretty much it that's like you that's all the all the normal stuff I bring that everybody uses day to day in your house um you know like I said the the things that you can use are endless um you know you can pretty much take almost anything that you utilize in your house every single day and you can turn it into um something that spirit can manipulate you kind of got to think out of the box a little bit um and that's one of the good things i love about investigating is you can think out of the box you know who would have thought you can take a, cat, a light up cat toy and use it to talk to the paranormal 
I never heard of that until until last year. So um, kind of neat, kind of cool thinking. Um, so what do you guys think? What do you guys want us to see investigate? If you guys have something really interesting that you'd like me to use um, during my investigations, let me know and I will be more than happy to investigate it with it. Um, <clears throat> you know, ideas are endless. So let me know what you guys think, your thoughts, comments. Um, just let me know and don't forget if you have not subscribed to the Seeking Spirit YouTube channel, just hit that like button and subscribe. Thank you so much for your time and you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you and have a good day. Bye.